three Toastmaster clubs and has attended and participated in hundreds of Toastmaster meetings. This speech is given in conjunction with Tracy's speech to help new Toastmaster members understand how Toastmaster works at its best. Both speeches are being recorded and will be available on the club website. The title of Joy's speech is It Takes a Day. Joy the Lord, It Takes a Day. What does it take to make a great Toastmasters meeting? It takes a village, a Toastmaster village. There are three stages of making a good meeting. One is approximately a week, the week before the meeting. The second stage is the half hour before the meeting starts. And the third stage is the meeting itself. The week before the meeting, the <coughs> Mr. Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen, the week before the meeting, the Vice President of Education or another officer, if that person is not here, will ask for people to volunteer to fill in roles. This person will have already checked to see who has already signed in for things so that nothing is duplicated. And they try to fill as many roles as possible, particularly the important, the major roles such as Toastmaster, General Evaluator, and Speakers, and Tabletop Master. Now this is not just done by the Vice President of Education. Obviously people have to volunteer. So a lot of people are participating in this, this stage. Then during the week, the various participants are doing their own preparation. The speakers are working on their speeches. They not only prepare a speech, they also prepare an introduction. Ideally, an introduction should give your name, your Toastmaster ranking, if any, and the project and manual that you are working on for this particular speech. It may include how long you've been a Toastmaster. That's optional. It should also include any background information that will show that you are qualified to speak on this subject. For instance, my, my introduction mentioned that I've been a Toastmaster for 26 years and have attended hundreds of meetings. If you were giving a speech about building something and you're a carpenter or you have built the same item yourself, that would be a good thing to put in your introduction. The idea is to have explanations in the introduction so that you can launch right into your speech when you've been talking without having to explain why you're qualified to speak on the subject ahead of time. The grammarian will look for a word of the day. Now ideally the word of the day would be one that maybe you have heard or read but weren't quite sure what it meant or one that you have you know what it means but you've heard it misused. It's better not to have an obscure word. It may be, sound like a lot of fun to pick a word like defenestration or anti-disestablishmentarianism. Anti but the ideal word should be one that people can actually use when they're speaking because the purpose is to increase our vocabulary. The table topic master will pick a theme if that hasn't already been done, will notify the toastmaster so that it can go on to the agenda and prepare questions to go with the theme. I miss anybody. The person who is going to be leading the Pledge of Inspiration will find some inspirational message that they want to quote or read or come up with something on their own that they want to do. All this is done during the week before the meeting. About half an hour before the meeting, or maybe a little earlier, the Trophed sergeant at arms arrives in time to have the room all set up before the meeting starts. Everyone else arrives in time to take care of any business they need to do before the meeting starts so that we can all be in our seats ready to start at 7.15. Now some of the business that has to be taken care of ahead of time relates to the speakers. The speaker will give their insert introduction to the Toastmaster. You may have already posted it on the website or sent it to the Toastmaster. It's a good idea to print a copy and bring it anyway because the Toastmaster might not remember to bring it. All 
also need to find out who your evaluator is, give the evaluator your manual, and make sure they know which project they're being they're evaluating. You can do that by either bookmarking the manual or opening the page to the exact page they want, just to make sure the, the page for evaluation is the page before the beginning of the next project. So sometimes when it's open, an evaluator will think, oh, this is the project I'm doing, and they evaluate the one that was not intended to be evaluated. So it's a good idea to not only open to the evaluation page, but to write your title and the date at the top, and maybe even the name of the evaluator. That way, the evaluator know what they're supposed to be doing. Checking to see if I've missed anything. The Toastmaster will arrive in time to distribute agendas, which she will have printed up earlier. And if there are still any vacancies on the on the agenda, the Toastmaster talks to individuals to try to fill those vacancies before the meeting starts. The person who is doing the inspiration and pledge will make sure they know where the flag is because it's not always in the same position in there. <coughs> Grammarian will get out there. Their word of the day. The speakers will let the timer know, or the timer will ask the speakers about the time of the speech. So all this is known before the meeting starts. The grammarian may print, as Chris did, a copy of the word of the day to put up so that we can see it. She used a nice large print. That's what the best thing, make it as large as possible so that people can read it. In case you can't see it, or if there is no prepared paper, I like to write the word of the day at the top of my agenda to remind me to try to use it. And I hope I am being succinct enough while I'm doing this. Once it is 7.15, the sergeant at arms comes to the lectern, wraps the gavel. At that time, all conversation stops. Now, ideally, in a perfect meeting, nobody is speaking during the meeting except the person up here or someone that person calls on, such as a participant to explain their duties. If you absolutely have to communicate with somebody during the meeting, you write a note. Talking during the meeting is very distracting. We do that. So everyone pays attention to that. The Toastmaster will introduce the person to give the inspiration and pledge, who will come up and have been already prepared and know if they're reading something they have it out. If we are reading something or we're using equipment, it's set up ahead of time. We don't delay the meeting. The Toastmaster will also introduce the visitors. Now this is something that we sometimes get confused about. We know we have a lot of applauding in a Toastmaster meeting, but people are not always sure when, when applause is appropriate. Anyone who is being introduced to come up front should get applause all the way as they are walking up front. When they finish, they get applauded as they leave. Anyone who is speaking from their place gets applauded after they speak. Now this includes visitors, each one individual. So we all need to remember that and pay attention. The president will then introduce the Toastmaster who will explain that the various participants are going to explain their, their meeting roles telling what they do and why we have that particular position. After which, he will simply say, our ah counter is Chris, I'm blanking on your last name, and so on. And then the person will stand up and explain their duties. During the meeting, the radar person, the ah counter, and the grammarian are all taking notes. The radar person is writing down things that have been said so that he or she will be able to ask questions at the end of the meeting to find out how well we're listening. The grammarian will be noting who used the word of the day and also making notes of any particularly good use
emphasis of the English language or we just errors in the language so they can even report on it. The odd counter will keep track of the odd of the other color words. Then these, these speakers will obviously give their speeches. The Toastmaster will read the introduction, the speaker will speak, there's one minute of silence afterwards so everyone can write notes. And after the last speaker, after that minute of silence, we have a timer to report. Now when someone is running the meeting, the Toastmaster, the General Evaluator, or the Table Topic Master, although we normally approach first people to come up behind the lectern, it's a good idea for them to be behind the lectern, the, those people I've just mentioned, so that they can follow the agenda, because it's very easy to forget one of the things that we're supposed to do. And it makes the move, meeting move smoothly, we should do those things in order. The Table Topic Master will give a very brief explanation of the topic and then call, ask a question and then call on a first. That way everybody has a chance to start thinking of what they would answer if they're the one called on. The evaluators, of course, take notes during the speeches so that they can give their proper evaluation. But again, everyone is doing this silently. So as you can see, there's a lot that goes into making a meeting flow smoothly. It seems like maybe one person running the meeting, that's the person responsible. But that isn't the way it is. It takes a village. It takes a Toastmaster village to have a great Toastmaster meeting. Yeah. It's your Toastmaster. Thank you, Joy. It was a very good explanation of the Toastmaster rules and what we do in our <laughs>